freedom, freedom. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to session two of Civics 101 for Kansas City Icy Stars Cycle 2. So the music that uh, welcomed us this morning was Freedom by Farrell Williams, suggested by Tanafi. Can you tell us why you picked that song? What 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 about it inspired you? I don't know. I just thought it's catchy. Um, I spent a lot of time, like a lot of my time was managed as a kid. Mm -hmm. So not much room was left for me to do anything I liked. So when I heard that song the first time, it like, to me, it seemed like a fight song just cause you know. Yeah, it got me going. <laughs> Freedom. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. So here we are. Um, moving into our second session. So, um, I sent out a email. Uh, I hope everyone got it. It looks a little like this. So if there's any uh, trouble or, or, or problems, uh, check with each other. There's usually a few people who have no trouble, and there's usually one or two people who just it just for some reason vexes them. So if anybody has any trouble, share amongst yourselves, and I'm sure um, collectively you're not going to have any issue with that part of the assignment. Then you email me. Uh, the URL for your slide share, okay? And I will place all those presentations on the class website where it says presentations. So again, um, if you're wondering how it rolled in prior sessions, including cycle one, it's all there for you to see your predecessor's work. It would be great, everybody, if you would do all this by the Wednesday before the final session. This is a, a critical point. I know you're very busy. You have a lot of things on your plate, but it would be very much appreciated if you can do that. That way, if if you are um, need some uh, coaching, uh, usually one or two interns uh, just fail to get the assignment 100%. So I have to do a little coaching, you know what I'm saying? And say, hey, you know, Roger, you need to add this or whatever the case may be, right? And we want you to have enough time to take that coaching and get me get get it back to us before the Friday session, okay? So uh, that would be awesome, everyone, if you can deliver all this to me by Wednesday before our last session, which would be, I think it's June eighth, so you know, two days before. Okay, cool. All right, thank you so much. All right, now um, back to our um, presentation here. So remember, you have the opportunity to book 30 minutes with me. Um, that is at your discretion, you know, um, to ask me questions about our classwork. Uh, if you're uh, troubled about the assignment, you're not quite sure, or you're or you're you're booking along just fine, and you want to get some feedback. Whatever it, you want to do, you know, uh, you want to shoot the breeze <laughs> about politics, you know, in the news. There's so much to talk about. This time is for you, uh, but but you got to use it fast. Otherwise, it, it may not be as useful to you. I'm, uh, my calendar is open to you up until um, the class is over, and, and frankly, even afterwards, if 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 if, if you still want to chat, you know, after our class is over. One of the things that I think I want to just sort of wrap up before we move on is uh, some of the insights that we got from discussing the pay to spray case. And the way I talk about that, those insights would be um, what I call customer versus citizen. When I say, think of yourself as a citizen or think of yourself as a customer, um, what, what, it, what does it mean to be a customer? If I'm a customer, what does that mean? Uh, you're a consumer. Yeah. Okay, I'm consuming. Yeah. Patronizing. 
It means my own satisfaction is the goal. Right. Your your own needs, your own in other words, you want to consume something, could be, could be a, a, a sports drink, it could be a, a shoe or a fashion or a piece of technology, right? You pick that item out according to your needs and wants, and then you, you use it or, cons quote, consume it, and then do you like it or not, right? Are you satisfied? What happens um, if you're not satisfied? You, you can you voice your opinion. I wanna you can don't consume it anymore. It or return whatever you are unsatisfied with or, you know, just complain about it. And, you know. Complain or you just won't buy it anymore. Yeah, you don't consume it anymore. Yeah. So it's like that's the marketplace, right? You find out about the product through the marketplace. It's, it's advertised. You know, you go to the supermarket and you're trying to buy Say a sports drink. There's a brand you like, but oh wait, there's a new brand on the shelf, and it's got a, set, a sale going, right? And it and you try it. What the heck? And you you like it. You you know what? That's a good bargain. I'm gonna buy that that product, and I'm gonna abandon my Gatorade. So Gatorade experiences a loss, right? They were counting on you, and you were buying maybe a bottle a month, a week, or whatever it was for your your workouts and whatnot now they've lost your income so can they what can they do to get to, to get you back um improve services yeah they can improve or offer what um discounts yeah competitive offer yeah, mm -hmm. they try to lure you back. We'll we'll give you, you know, we'll give you uh, fifty cents off the bottle, right? And you and you may uh, get a, you could get an email, maybe if you're on their list, you can see a coupon in the uh, in the in the newspaper, whatever, right? Or they could just offer a sale, and you don't have to do anything. It's just, hey, you know, sometimes you see one of these things, buy one get one half off, you know, and you, oh, that's a good deal. <clears throat> the main thing though is. It is your your needs, your your wants that are driving this transaction. And as a customer, um, um, we say the customer is always right, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt insulted or not served? Yes. Can you say a little bit what happened? Uh, you, you want me to give uh, um, uh, an example of my experience? Yeah, some some place where you felt not served, you know, and you were, you know, just angry or you know, perturbed. Um, I can honestly say, kind of recently, um, and I don't know if uh, Demonte can kind of attest to this. Uh, me and Demonte uh, went to uh, it was a local uh, uh, suit, suit kind of boutique, yeah. and. Um, and to me, this is just from my personal experience. I don't know if DeMonte felt it, but it kind of seemed like, even though they were a little bit busy, it, it kind of seemed as if they really wanted to service us. Mm. And it's almost kind of as if they didn't think that we were going to buy anything. We didn't want to buy anything, but um, he needed, he he wanted to uh, get the sizing of his neck and uh, his um, arm length just so he knows um, how to get uh, properly fitted for shirts and suits. Yeah pants and uh it just didn't really seem as if they were interested in uh servicing so you, us yeah so you detected kind of a, a apprehensive or tardiness or like maybe they made a judgment these these dudes aren't gonna buy a little lethargic about helping us yeah i right. wouldn't and so say, i wouldn't say that they, oh go, i'm sorry no go ahead i wouldn't say um from from my experience when we walked in i don't think that they made they, I'm sure they did, but I don't. Um, I wouldn't uh, say that there was an initial judgment to be like these dudes aren't going to buy. When we initially walked in, they did greet us. You know, there was the how can we help you? What are we looking for today? You know, 
all the normal questions myself as a salesperson, I just kind of look for certain things now. Um, and um, as she's asking me these questions, I let her know that I'm just trying to get, you know, my, the sizes. Cause I had never been fitted for like dress clothing and things like that. And so I just let her know, like, I'm just trying to see what I fit, you know, what my sizes are. And she said, are you looking for anything specific? She asked me if we were like um, planning to planning for an event. And I told her, no, I'm just looking for the sizes. And her facial expression changed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it went from like kind of, it went from excited to like uninterested. Like I don't care anymore. Right. <laughs> so, so, so the body language of the, of the customer, uh, the salesperson kind of, you know, made a judgment like these guys aren't ready. They're not, they don't got their wallets, you know, ready to go. This could be a tedious process or whatever their whatever their judgment was, but you felt a kind of lack of attention. And, and you can imagine a, a different scenario where the person was like, oh yeah, yeah, let's get, we'll get you measured right up, sir. Um, and their judgment was, well, maybe they're not gonna buy today, but if I really take well good care of them, you know, and give them my card or whatever, you know, be sure to come back, you know, next week we're gonna have a sale. You know, there's a lot of different ways it could have gone, right? But the point is, you know, the, the universe has narrowed down to you and this salesperson. I mean, you, the world of the, the, the transaction is you in the store, which happened to be a clothing store, and the salesperson trying to figure out these these dudes coming in and making a lot of judgments. And, you know, you're making a reaction to, the, to that reaction. And it looks like it didn't quite inspire you both. I'm not sure, you know, if you would return. Maybe you give them another chance. No, he said, there's a solid no on that. So there's a lot that went, has gone into this, you know, so how, if we're talking maybe 10 minutes, five minutes, you know, so we're not talking about a lot of time, you know, but there's a lot going on. Now think, hold that to the side. Now let us think about the, the mindset of the citizen. Um, what is what is going on here with the citizen you know, as a, as a member of society, keeping in mind some of the things we talked about in the pay to spray case. The citizens' react, re relationship to the larger society is, is what? They pay for those needs in that area. Your obligation into whatever city you're living in or whatever... Um, company you're working with yeah and then vice so, versa the, the city's um the says what the city needs to give you as as a person you're yeah yeah my bad yeah so the, so we're, we're trying to ease into some a slightly different point of view here because there's rights and obligations of the citizen in the body politic like our friend in the pay to spray case there's an expectation of service, like my house is on fire, okay? But it's a two-way street even before the transaction occurs. And this is kind of what we're trying to touch on here. Um, so how do we pay for, um, for the services that we get in uh as a customer how, how 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 does the money get generated uh, money just taxes. say what taxes no no I, i'm speaking now as the customer going back to the customer in the store um so you're talking about like personal finances right that's that's yeah, uh, generated I'm, through labor yeah, so so as a customer, you pay the price of the item, whatever it is, right? You, I mean, if it's a farmer's market, maybe you can negotiate for the for the apples. But in this clothing store, can you negotiate? Right? You look at the price tag, right? As a customer, you pay the price on offering. 
and you either pay it or you don't pay it. But as a citizen, I think you just said, you pay taxes. So you're paying the taxes as you go, if you will. I mean, year to year, depending on where you live. And you may consume the services like you may need uh, the CTA or you're riding on the public transportation. You may not. You may, your house may burn and you may need the fire department or maybe your life is fine and tranquil and you don't need any services from the city, really. Maybe you ride the bus. Maybe you don't ride the bus. But you're paying your taxes all along. Okay? Now, in the world of civics, as opposed to the world of customers, how do we change the, those services? How do we change them? Um, I would say, um, even though it's hard, not to always um, service with judgment, just service with just kindness. Or um, another way, um, you know, if you have issues, research. Sometimes I don't think I think people just have problems based off of what they think or from based off of what they might read or what they might see on the news instead of actually having an actual personable um, um, experience with it, if that if that may make sense to you. So in, in the world of civics, if you're if you want to do some change, if, if you're not happy with the way things are, there's some work you can do like research. And then what? So I've done my research. Yeah, policies. Yeah, you can you can try to change policy. Mm -hmm. And you can do that. Civic change through civic action. And some of those actions were in the in the, in the checklist that I gave you when you took the survey. You know the introductory survey. Remember that? I asked you, you know, had you been to a public meeting? Had you written a letter to the editor, et cetera, et cetera? Had you done a boycott, a boycott? Had you used social media? Like hey, this, you know, I went to a I went to a town meeting and uh, they they shut me down and this is outrageous and you know, you're posting this on social media. We need to have more meetings on the subject, you know, whatever it is your opinion, you're trying to affect some change. Um, ultimately, though, what is the single most powerful tool that you have as a citizen? Your I believe voice. It's your voice. Your vote. Yeah. Your voice and your vote. To mm -hmm. vote. To voice to vote. Your, your, your voice is your vote. Um, and so in order to affect change, you know, in our civic world, it's not about I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy your suit, <laughs> or I'm gonna tell all my friends that you you suck, you know, and no none of my friends will, will come to your store to buy suits. That's what you do in the world of customs, you know, or alternatively. You had great service from that tailor, from that clothing store. You loved it to pieces, and it was a good price. You tell all your friends, hey, dudes, you get married, you go to a party, you know, what, what you, you need to dress for success. Check these guys out because they took care of me, and I look great. This suit is a bargain. Makes me look really, I feel really great in this suit. You know what? You're, you're just being a salesman for the store, and you're not being paid to do it. Right, you're just expressing your happiness, I guess. Right, with the deal. And in the world of civics, talking is part of it. Like you say, you know, making some fuss, doing a meeting, yes. But in the end of the day, <clears throat> you have your vote. To vote for um, the local leaders who are either, are either doing a good job, in your opinion, or not doing a good job. Now, there's one final step that you can take in the world of civics. It doesn't quite have an, an analogy in the world of commerce. So, and what would be the ultimate thing you could do if you really wanted to change something, you know, in your in your town or your city? 
You know what I, I think? I think first is it uh, change starts with self first, I believe. Yes, it does. No doubt. And, but, um, <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm so sorry. I was going to say, uh, keep that thought because it's partially the answer of what I'm looking for right now. In our world of civics, there's one thing you can do. It's, it's the most time consuming it's the most arduous it's you know it's it's the deepest okay. thing you can do you know say, say what I, I would say contact your local um your local government you know maybe like your uh you know your local government or your aldermans or mayors you know reach out to them or just yeah kind of like just like the the burning issue find groups or organizations yes that support what you want to change and deeply embed yourself into them and learn from them how to really speak and actually put what your burning issue is out there in a proper manner. That's it. That is, that is almost to, to where I want you to be. And that's <sighs> the purpose of our assignment actually to get you in that exactly that mindset, Roger, that you just said, that's where you're all going to be in about two weeks but there's you something can, beyond that, that you is, can be an activist or run for office yes run for office that's the answer i was looking for and it may be that someone in this cycle someday may decide to run for office you know like a school board you know city councilman who knows what's in your future i'm just putting it out there that it's it's we need more people like you, the faces that I'm looking at right now, in local office, making these key decisions for your neighbors, than we have right now. Uh, for example, in the all this all the state legislators of all the country, right? So we got 50 states plus Guam and Puerto Rico, right? Five percent of them are Af African American women, right? So that's a group of people who are way underrepresented in our government, okay? And is it 5% of America, African-American women? No, obviously not. So we want more people who are like in the IC stars world to be governors, to be, you know, our leaders in terms of, uh, you know, mayors, city councilmen, school board members, park district board members, you know what I'm saying? Now, again, it's a big challenge and it's not for everybody by any means, but let's put it this way. It's for more people than than we think <laughs> or than who, who it's for more people who think like, oh, that could never be me. Right. <laughs> it's for more than that. OK. So to sum up, I, I just want to you know make this point about the differences between thinking like a, a consumer where it's you, 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 you know, your tastes. <clears throat> Am I being served right now? It's also speed. That's another thing that we should notice. How is it? How often do you go into a store and you get impatient that you haven't been served in like a minute? You know, like it's, it's a FedEx mentality. So you go to a Starbucks, you go to a pizzeria, you go to wherever you're going. And it's like, God damn, I've been in here for three minutes and they haven't, you know, they haven't lifted me up and carried me around the store yet. And we 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 have been we've become used to, I guess, being served you know speedily, with a with a good product at a cheap price. <laughs> you know you can blame Walmart for that. You, you know buy toilet paper for a nickel. But my friends, there's there's a high price for getting low price goods, and that's a maybe another conversation for another day. <clears throat> Walmart doesn't like union workers. They they source from far away where there's no labor standard. So when you buy that five cent roll of toilet paper, you're pay, we're paying for it, and it's a funny thing to think about. But the, there's a high price for low priced goods. But nevertheless, I would say Walmart and FedEx and a lot of other things going on in America has trained us up to feel like we deserve cheap shit all the time, really fast, and 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 don't complain, you know and Think of all the all the people, all Americans who are serving us at Walmart and Starbucks. What are their what are their lives like? You know what I'm saying? That's the other side of all this. Anyway, this the customer is that is that has got that kind of mentality. 
You know, the customer's always right. My wallet is out. Who's gonna who's gonna give me the, the product I want at the price I want and deserve? The citizen, different mindset. The citizen is engaged in the body politic on a two-way street. You give and you get. Give and get. It's not just getting. And um, in the world of civics, if you we 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 uh, pay for these services by taxes, that's a great pro great uh, point. In the world of customers, we pay as we go, and uh, the, the 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 provider of those products makes a profit. In the world of civics, uh, you can go um, on and on uh, and never use the service. Right? You 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 never your house doesn't burn down. You don't use mass transit, but you're still paying for the operation of the government. And that's a weird idea. If you think about it from the world of customers, would you go into a store and, and pay $100 and not take anything out of the store? That that doesn't make any sense, right? If I go into the store, I pay $100. I want $100 worth of goods, whatever it is, right? Whether it's a good suit or a bunch of toilet paper. The idea of me going into the store and paying $100 and walking out with nothing makes zero sense. But that's not the attitude that we want to have when we're operating ourselves in civics. Okay, that's. I think I made the point. Any any questions or, or pushback or, or reactions to this, this so, idea of the customer versus the citizen? So I have, I have something. This is something that I've thought about a lot. I always wanted to be... Uh, be someone like that to fight for something. But then when you look at, you know, history, as far as you look at people like uh, Fred Hampton, um, yeah. uh, Malcolm X, okay. um, those, those, free, those three gentlemen, the freedom fighters uh, from Mississippi. Right. You just look at all the things and you just see the worst part of it. So it kind of makes you feel like, should I step up to it when something happened to me or my family? That's the thing that worries me you know and then i have also a thought about is like should i even worry about that those are my issues well that's that's a great that's a great reflection uh i don't know if i want to answer it just now but i'd like i like everyone to sort of meditate on what roger is asking us which i hear as there's a risk to be involved in civics even even if you go to a public meeting and you know you're trying to protest something or i mean even if i guess even if you just go out of your house <laughs> you know to a meeting you're putting yourself out there right <laughs> uh, you could say let alone if you are identified as a leader of some change effort you know especially if you're critical of people in power right you're protesting the police, for example, which is something that happens all over America, sadly. Do you want to be one of those people that are out there in the front lines? You know, even for something that's very controversial and uh, fraught with uh, energy like policing or something not so controversial like the the quality of the hot lunches at your elementary school, you know, which people can protest too. They don't like this quality of the food that they're serving their children and so they you know what i'm saying they get into involved in civic work not as not as fraught as protesting the police but still when you step out in public to protest or to demand change you are um putting yourself at risk absolutely and it's not for me to tell you when you should do that roger <laughs> like that's for you to decide and that's part of what we're trying to grapple with here with these questions about the burning issues. Mm -hmm. So is, is I know that doesn't quite answer your question, though, but I'm asking everyone to think about it. Well, it's really wasn't a question. It was more of a comment that I just wanted to just put out there because I know mm -hmm. you're well versed in this. And, you know, even if you could give me some insight or creative ways to kind of navigate that, because I do at some point want to voice opinions because there's so many voices that haven't been heard that are afraid to speak up you yeah. know especially on things that we know that need to be changed that we see every day we wake up to it we go to sleep to it well um 
we can so so you should book the time with me right as soon as you can and then we can talk very specifically to answer your questions so there in other words there are things that you can do there's there's a there's some guides i have books you can read about how to be an effective advocate okay okay you know how to speak in public if that's something you're worried about or um how to write a press release you know i mean again mm. these are skills that can be imparted and practiced Okay. And uh, in other versions of this class, we actually do that. But okay. that's not the version we're doing now. But if that's one of the, your interests, book the time in and we'll book and we'll, we'll noodle on it. Okay. okay. I'm, looking at, I'm looking at like at least 20 books right here that are guides for activists. All right. All right. I and we have a conversation it. and I can and I can uh, send you the link to these books. And, you know, for 15 bucks, 20 bucks, you get one of these books. And it, it, it has everything you need, depending on what, you know, what your, what your question is. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's true for everybody else too, by the way. So, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Thank you. All sir. Right. I appreciate you. you. You bet. All right. So, um, um, let's return now to this world of, of the civic engagement. Right. So yeah, for our purposes, we're talking about these three domains. Uh, to break down civics. The first one was uh, the civic heart. And we started to look at that in some detail last class. And we started some really, what I thought some really yeasty conversation about what does that mean to you? Now we're going to return to that. I'm going to send you into small groups, four small groups of uh, two people each. And what I want you to do now is um, the assignment is you can see this, the slide, right? You can see the slide. Yes. Thumbs up if you see the slide. No. All right. Let me make sure. I'm, let's sure I'm doing this right. Oh, now that, that that explains it. Now you see it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. We're gonna we're gonna do the four uh, the small groups of two people each. Your assignment now is what is the number one. Uh, aspect of civic heart you talked about a lot of good ones last time you're gonna to have to remember that or revisit it newly however you'd like to do that consult your notes from the first from the first session um you'll have 10 minutes in small groups and i want each group to report back two things what's the number one aspect of civic heart whatever you think and what is the behavior that you're looking for that will tell you that that uh, that the person has that aspect. Um, what is the specific behavior? So, if you're saying, for example, the number one civic heart is speed, which is something that no one's ever talked about, but I'm just using that as an example, then you would say uh, Tom shows speed when he runs really fast to you know the store during break. He gets back, you know, in three minutes flat or something like that. You know, you're, t you're giving me some concrete example of the behavior that makes the uh, attribute real. Okay. Any questions? What's the number one aspect of civic heart? And what's the behavior that you're looking for? All right. We're going to do the breakout rooms. We're going to send you into them right now. You'll see the invitation. All right, we're coming back into session from uh, our small group work uh, where I ask you to noodle on this. What's the number one thing that really grabs you about the civic heart? What is what 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 should uh, what should be in that civic heart to be a really powerful and profound uh, actor in civics? And what's the behavior that we're looking for? Um, OK, so. Um, Room uh, room one, what do you got? Room Who's one, room one? one? Me and Greg were room two. Braxton and Ashafani? Ashanafi. Ashanafi? Yeah. <laughs> so what do you got? Um, we talked about how uh, we talked about accountability. That was okay. the number one thing. Okay. 
Um, and we said how people need receipts and everything falls apart if uh, your whole argument falls apart if you don't have any receipts or any evidence to back up your claims. Evidence. OK, mm -hmm. so um, in the world of accountability and being uh, truthful, being honest, uh, being a person of your word. I guess these these things could so maybe be somewhat e equated. Yes. And being able to hold the others in your group accountable. So you are and others are. Yes. And so this idea of evidence is is so you know the word receipt would be kind of a shorthand if you will. So Tom, here's you got a, we're giving you $100 towards the project. And you have 2 weeks. I come back and I produce the work, but I spent two hundred dollars. So eh, not quite doing what I was told. Or I come back and I and I give you an excuse like, "Hey Braxton, I I didn't quite make my deadline. Give me another give me another couple of days." Well, Tom, show me your receipts, dude. You spent all the money we gave you. What? Where's the where's where's the product? Where's where... so. So I have not done what I was supposed to do, and the proof is in the pudding in terms of the receipts. So in 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 the, in the civic world, there's no receipts like like my receipt from Walgreens, you know, but there is other evidence that you would that you would stand for the receipt. You know, it could be a, a work product like, hey, Tom, you were supposed to produce a flyer for we're going to do a we're going to do a march, and you said you were going to make a flyer. Where's where's the draft of the flyer? You know, so you're asking for some kind of um, physical proof or, or 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 record, if you will, and I'm going to call that a receipt. Okay, so again, accountability backed up by some kind of evidence, hard evidence. It's not it's not just me saying, "Hey, Braxton, I got it. You were covered, dude. Don't worry about it." And you're saying, "Yeah, Tom, show me some, show me something in my hands," and then I can say whether you're, you're good to go or not. Okay, cool. Number, Rule number two, which was Brandon and Greg. Uh, it's something similar along the lines of what Braxton said, but um, but I the main thing we, we saw was empathy and not just saying it, but also proving that you care through your actions. Like um, if you care about the problems with the homeless people, like you would go to organizations, you know, passing out food or you know going to another organization mm -hmm. where they're advocating for finding homes for these homeless and participating in that so just through your actions and showing that you care and that you are part of the community and that you see it yes so that's i love that i love that example empathy is one that comes up quite a lot over the years in, in this in this conversation that we're having and again very easy to say like hey Tom was always talking about he cares, but I'd never seen him do diddly squat. We had a meeting about homeless. He didn't show up. He said he was going to show up, but didn't show up. He said he was going to give me a check for ten dollars, you know, because I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the homeless shelter and give them a hundred dollars. And he said he was going to be ten. He he didn't give me the ten. So what's all this talk about empathy that Tom is? All is all he's a gas bag is what he is, right? So yeah. It, 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 do, your, do your actions speak louder than your words. How many times have we heard that phrase? And in this world of civics, it really, really is so. And I don't have to say a lot, but if I show up, you're going to imply that he, he's, Tom is empathetic. I don't have to brag on it. I don't have to boast to you how big my heart is. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm the first guy that gave money to the homeless. You know, you know, it's, it's not my words that are important here is like what did tom do like you said you know, the is in the pudding. Put proof is in the pudding brandon says look you know i broke my foot the other day and i was in pain and tom walked past me and didn't even say hello to me he didn't even he didn't ask me how how i'm feeling you know i mean on a personal level you know what i'm saying on a personal level how do we show empathy um we can st have a conversation for the rest of our time together just on that it, it's so important but 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 I will just accept you guys' um, assertion that the proof is in the pudding and the behavior will tell you 
And the kind of behaviors we're looking for would be, you know, predictable. Like, did he give the ten dollars to the homeless group? Did he did he um, ask Brandon how he was feeling after he hurt himself? You know, um, was he listening? You know, with his whole self, or was he fiddling with his phone? You know what I'm saying? You know, he's he's he talks a good game, but 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 when it comes to it, he was really his he's, he wasn't really with me. You know what I mean? These behaviors are very telling. Little, little behaviors, but also some of these larger behaviors um, that will will, will 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 add up and will cause you to say, you know, that, that guy, Tom, he has empathy. He has a heart. He has heart. I, I've seen enough to, to say, and you make that judgment. Or the opposite. That Tom is a gas bag. All he does is talk. I never seen him do nothing. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't ask me how I was feeling the other day. You know, I was down. He walked past me. He was on his phone. These things add up and, and allow you to make that judgment, I think. And it, again, it sounds uh, simple, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's actually quite complex. You know, we take a lot for granted, but I'm just calling this up for your, for your attention. All right. Uh, that was a big one. Number three was Diamante and Ken Maron. So a a big aspect for us or for us was um for Civic Heart, you have to wanna cause change. You have to wanna make a difference in your community. And uh, a big factor behind that would be action. You know, yes, you have to wanna cause change, you have to wanna make a difference, but you also have to be willing to go to go out into the field and and actually do something to cause that change. Mm -hmm. Or to actually make that difference. Um, mm -hmm. I know Roger. Roger said something earlier. Uh, spoke earlier about like Malcolm X and a few other people he mentioned. I don't remember. Um, Malcolm X didn't just want to cause change. He suited up for war. He believed that the time for peace was over. He actually was out in the field making a difference. Martin Luther King, the opposite. He was peaceful. He didn't believe in violence. He peaceful protest. He marched in the streets. He didn't just want violence. He he was he was out doing something. He was didn't just want change. He was out doing something to make change. So right. you have to want to cause change, but you have to be willing to actually cause the change. So let's stop for a second. The willingness, that's that, that's the civic heart, right? There's something in you that says, I can't stand this. We got to change this. Again, where does that come from? I mean, it's from your lived experience, where you are as a, as a person, human being on this earth, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, whatever, however long you've been on this earth. There's something that says, this ain't right. And I've had it. And again, it's not something I can make you do. I can't argue with you. You know, Brandon, why aren't you more, you know, it, it doesn't do any good for me to harangue. That's not where it comes from. It's an inner thing. I think we need to re recognize that. So you have that urge. And once you have it, what you're saying is, so what's the, what's the action step? what what what's where do you where do you go um from being an internal thing in your mind to what i call being in public so this is a big a big point going from private to public is part of well is part of what triggers roger's concern about risk as long as you keep it to yourself there's no risk <clears throat> you know you talk to your wife you talk to your your, your boyfriend your girlfriend your your cousin your auntie who, you know, it's still pretty private, you know what I'm saying? And you could talk all kinds of trash, you talk all kinds of stuff, you know, or think to yourself. But once you talk to your neighbors and go out of your house and you're in the world, now you're public. And that is a huge point of difference. You say action, and that's kind of a shorthand for what we're saying. But basically, uh, generically, it's going from a private grievance a private, Jesus, that sucks, or a private, oh, wouldn't it be great? You know, again, all private to making it public, which is on the road to making it happen. If it's in your head and it's private, it's never going to happen. It's nothing, ain't never going to, nothing's going to happen. You'll just, it's just in your head, right? And this is true for a lot of things in life, I'm, I'm sure you can, you can say, you know, whether it's fixing your car or getting married, you know, boy, I really like that woman. I mean, I met my wife. It was on a blind date, right? And you know, at some point, you got to speak up. 
You got to speak up. And so, so it's true for our private lives. It's super, super true for our public lives. And to Roger's point, again, I don't want to beat him on the head with this, but this idea of going public, that's where the game changes. And what we're trying to talk about here is being successful in public life, not private life and not your business life. I see stars is helping you with that. This is about being successful in your public life. And um, again, I could teach, I have taught whole classes on how to, how to organize, how to have a public meeting, how to issue a press release. You know what I'm saying? What happens when you're in a, people start yelling, it's not going the way you thought it was gonna go, right? You thought everybody's gonna be on your side on this particular issue. It turns out your neighbors are not, a, they're not of one mind with you. Hmm. What do we do then? But yes, absolutely. When we go from our private mind, our private grievances, our private thoughts, our wishes, our complaints, our wishes for a better world, and you go public with it, yes, and take action. Awesome. Okay, final group number four, <clears throat> Maya right. and Roger. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and speak for this. Uh, I'm I'm open up a uh, couple of quotes that I kind of live by. One is uh, closed mouths don't get fed and uh, speak and you shall see. So a couple of things that, uh, that you know, it's a couple of simple similarities uh, is empathy, is being able to uh, collaborate with uh, individuals, uh, to have uh, one, one sound, one mind, and, uh, you know, it's respect for everybody in the community. And, um, you know, what's in your opinion? And, uh, you know, making a positive change, you know, positive social change for a stronger uh, civic fabric. Got it. So let's let's break that down for a minute. Closed mouths don't get fed. Speak and you'll and seek. But this idea of empathy leading to collaboration. So what I'm taking from this insight is how good a collaborator are you? Mm -hmm. No, do you show, are you able to listen? Are you able to show respect for, 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 for a group of people? And again, these are these are skills that you can learn. So you've been in teams, right? As part of, as you work at IC Stars, and you can think about the teams that you've been on, whether you you either led the team or you've been a teammate, and think about the teams that were really high performing, you know, and delivered their assignments super powerfully great. And you are very happy to be on that team. And then think of a team that didn't go so good. You got sidetracked. There's too many arguments. You lost focus. You start blaming each other. You know, Maya, you were supposed to come with the with the, with 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 the cookies. You didn't bring the cookies, and that, you know you start you you lose focus. And you start blaming each other for silly things. That the the, the the team has gone awry. Think about teams that went well and teams that go not so well. And the skills of the of the collaborator, the skills of the leader of the group of this time, whether they're the captain, the coach, however you want to call them, are teachable and coachable. And you think about those teams that you were on, why they were great. And then you've got to meditate on that and go, let's do that again. Whatever that was. Well, oh, they came prepared. Everybody had their papers and their pens. They had done their homework. We didn't have to go over, you know, so that means people were well prepared in advance, you know what I'm saying? And you're just thinking about those qualities that make for a great team. Someone cracked some jokes, they broke the ice, you know, we kind of got to know each other a little better, and then we got to business. Bam, we knocked it out, one, two, three, and we were done early. Everybody, and then we checked in with each other, which is, again, it's a piece of, this is a piece of work, how you, how you do good teamwork. Before the meeting is over, everyone checks in. Roger, how'd you feel about this meeting? You liked it? Went well? What went well? What? And everybody gets a chance to check in before we, or it's what we call check out, before the meeting is over. And that's how we do good meetings. So you think about those and don't let it to chance. You can actually read up how to run a good meeting or you can reflect with each other. Why was that meeting so great? You gotta think about it. Well, take some notes, okay? Be intentional. That's kind of how what we're looking for. You know, when, when you say we had a good collaboration, it went well, 
that's that's the evidence you're looking for there, right? As opposed to having some kind of meeting where it's chaos. There's no agenda. There's not enough chairs. I didn't provide any refreshments. Uh, I'm just talking, talking, talking. I'm not. I didn't get a chance for anyone to weigh in. You know, it's all one sided. So at the end of that meeting, people are leaving very dissatisfied. Nothing. So so a, a, an observer who's a fly on the wall would look at that meeting and go, that was sucky collaboration. There was zero collaboration in that meeting. No good. I give you an F as a collaborator, Tom. That don't don't do don't I don't want I don't like that's that's not gonna get us anywhere, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's in business or civics. Okay, so cool. Um, all excellent uh, thoughts, you know, in terms of um, how to be, uh, what's the what's in the civic heart, and I love the idea that you you're getting very specific on the behaviors, and that's the that's how we're going to roll for the for for the other aspects of civics. We're going to do the same kind of thinking, you know, for civic brain, um, and for civic muscle. Okay, very cool. So it's break time. So it is now 1010. So let us let us go to 1015 and we'll be back um, to continue on with we'll talk about leadership a little bit and then on to the civic brain, my friends. So let's take a break. Now before we move on to the uh, the next bucket of civic stuff, I want to bring up the concept of leadership. And I ask, I would like to ask the group for people to chime in with someone who they believe is a leader, living or dead. Tell me, please, who you think is a leader. I'd say uh, Fred Hampton was a leader. Uh, and everybody yeah. knows who that is? Yes. Anybody who don't know who he is? I think everybody I does. would. That, I would that'd be me. I think okay. I know the name, but I don't know much about him. Okay, say a little bit about who Mr. Hampton was. Okay, so Fred Hampton was a young uh, member of the Black Panthers, and uh, he spoke about uh, social change, social injustice. He helped set up uh, different organizations, actually from Chicago, actually. Uh, he helped set up uh, different uh, organizations to help kids that didn't that didn't get food, uh, different uh, food drives, coach drives, and uh, definitely worked within the uh, the black urban community and uh, helped just uh, with awareness. And he spoke with uh, um, intelligence, grace, and strength as well. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about in the early 60s, mid 60s. What happened to him? Um, well, he uh, his art, well, his particular group was infiltrated by a gentleman that uh he had got into some legal issues so the fbi used him to infiltrate um fred hampton's group um and uh gave them gave them fbi uh intel the gentleman actually drew up a diagram of his apartment the chicago police came into his home and uh opened fire and killed him and a couple other different members of uh, his particular right, group so, so he was assassinated yeah assassinated, assassinated yeah. by the he was assassinated by the police and the FBI. So this mm -hmm. is a young black man recognized as a real leader. He was bringing together blacks, whites, Latinos across the city. Um, potential he created the mayor, Rainbow Coalition. The Rainbow, potential future mayor. Who knows what that young guy could have done, where he could have gone. All right. So clear, powerful figure. Any other examples? Examples of people who think call, want to call someone out as a leader, please share. I would say um, someone I think would would have been a leader. Um, I'll say Harriet Tubman. Oh, so, say say why? Who? Why? Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman. Um. Well, well, I'll give the backstory because Brandon said who she was a slave who helped free other slaves. She um, was the major. What's the word I'm looking for? Major factor in the Underground Railroad. Oh, uh, uh, I, I remember now. It's, we talked about it in history. Yeah, that just watch the movie the with Cynthia Irvo. Yeah, so uh, a, a former slave, enslaved uh, person. Uh, which also we're talking about in the 1830s to the 60s, right? We're talking about you know over 100 years ago. 
uh, became a leader in the Underground Railroad, which means taking enslaved people to freedom at great risk, and became the first female officer in the American Army. Actually led troops, you know, <laughs> quite successfully. Wrong. Yes, I believe she freed over like 400 slaves, something. She something did. Like so, okay, clear. Uh, I would say courageous, uh, courage, inventiveness, resource, resolution, right? Talk about overcoming difficulties. Oh, cool. Any other examples uh, people want to share? A leader. What does a leader look like? From any, any place, any discipline, living or dead. Um, I would say uh, Martin Luther King is one of mine. I know it's ba people may think it's basic and everything, but uh, I really admire the way that he went about everything in a nonviolent way. Nonviolence. Right. So again, this idea of leading in public, the word grace, I think, was applied. You know, this idea of, uh, would you say vision, visionary? Yes. Well, that's the word we haven't really talked talked about yet but we will in a minute so it's very fascinating that you picked some of these individuals um what would what what are, what are some of the things you think they have in common i mean as different as they as they are what do they have in common courage yeah um i would say uh resilience resilience and by resilience i think we're meaning you persevere despite difficulty correct you, yes. you walk through a brick wall mm -hmm. like, that is impossible what you just did is impossible i have no idea how you did that thing that you just did i would have said it's impossible and that's part of the the, the mystery and the magic of this work that people do the impossible um, routinely. So this idea of resilience and courage, they're so connected. Um, I would say, we, well, well, what else? Uh, let me, let me, let me be silent and hear what else you have to say. What do they have in common? They all have a, a civilian mindset. Say, say that again. Like we, they all have a civilian mindset, like you was talking about earlier. Oh, looking out, looking, looking out after the people. Yeah, the, as a whole. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys are heading in the direction I want you to head. I'm not surprised. Um, the the kind of people who are attracted to icy stars, um, I I think are sort of in a certain space when they think about leaders. I just think it's it's just the natural way of things of the kind of people that want to be an IC stars and the kind of people IC stars want to be with. So I will now introduce you to the concept of servant leadership. So this is a model that I believe in, and I believe that it is practiced at, 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 at IC stars, even if it's, even if it's named or not named. So my question is, can you be a servant and a leader at the same time? Can you serve and lead simultaneously? Yes. Yes. Say why do you think so, Maya? You can serve the people and you can lead them at the same time because you're leading by example. You're leading by example. Yes. Right. So what I get from that comment is like you're not above people. You're not trying to lord it over people. You're of the people. And this is a, it sounds simple to say it, but it's actually very deep and complex. <laughs> and it has to do with almost with the um how shall I say this with the with with the with the agreement spoke unspoken agreement if you will between the leader and the people that he or she is leading and we're going to get to that in a second so I think we're on the right track so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you uh, a five minute video that I hope will 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 we'll try to uh, sort of um break it all down 
And um, this is Archbishop Desmond Tutu of South Africa, who is a leader in the apartheid movement and who won the Nobel Peace Prize, I believe, in 1988. So this is a man of the cloth, an African, -Amer an African man who was a, a religious uh, leader, but also became a huge civic leader, world famous, you know, uh, known all over the globe and a winner of the Nobel Peace Prize. Okay, so let us see this little video here. Seeing this now. We all, we all see the video, yes? Okay, cool. Here it is. What, in your opinion, makes a good leader? What qualities? Ah, yes. It's a question that uh, we've had to deal with quite a bit. Uh, looking at some of the leaders we have had who have sometimes uh, led their countries into disastrous situations. I think ultimately you want a leader who is also a servant. I mean really uh, the leader is, is a leader because he is a servant. When you look at some of the greatest leaders, Nelson Mandela is, is someone who is not in it for his own aggrandizement. He, he leads on behalf of, for the sake of. That is one. And it almost always is that the great leader will show just how he is uh, or she is a, a, a leader for the sake of the lead by suffering. A person who is a servant as well, that is, yeah. that is the ultimate. I, for, for me, yes, that you, you are not one who is seeking self-glorification, uh, who, who wants to feather his nest. Uh, I mean, just look, say at, at, uh, at, I mean, you can look at Mother Teresa or any, I mean, Mahatma Gandhi, the Dalai Lama, uh, you'll see that uh, a great characteristic is they are doing something, yeah, sacrificial in a way for the sake of those they are serving uh, and suffering. Well, the Dalai Lama has been in exile for 50 years. Nelson Mandela was in jail. Mother Teresa lives with the poor. She lived with the poor. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi, you could go on. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, and then the, the great leader is someone who is inspiring inspires his followers, her followers, Aung San Suu Kyi. Mm. I mean, she said nothing very much for 11 years, and yet she remains the only real leader in, in, in Burma. Uh, why? Uh, that somehow the leader uh, is encapsulates and 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 somehow uh, represents the best that is in the in the people, the aspirations of the people, um, and 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 yes, it is someone who can inspire. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot in that. Uh, represents the aspirations the visionary so I think what the Archbishop was saying is very consistent with some of the thoughts that you guys were uh, coming up with that the kind of leader that we're sp speaking about has a vision that somehow represents the best or the aspirations and maybe even the, the people who are being led can't 
necessarily vocalize everything, you know, so succinctly, you know, but it, it's in their hearts and minds that somehow the visionary leader can see that and then articulate it in a way that causes people to go, yeah, that's, you're speaking right to me. I, I get you. Yes. Let's, let's, I'll get up out of my chair now and, and, and follow you in, in, on some path. I mean, that's what Martha Luther King said. I have a dream. He didn't say I have a plan. He said I have a dream, and he uh, was able to articulate all the ills of America as well as the promise of America in such a way that blacks and whites and many people across America go, "Yeah, you you are speaking to my soul. I un you you see what I see," and of course, saying it in a way that is was very powerful. The other thing that I think I, I need to lift up from this that he said is the leader is a leader because they serve. And this is, this is, it goes by really fast, but I think it needs to be sat on for a minute. It's almost as if we, the people, give permission for this person to be a leader. In other words, the only way someone like Martin Luther King or Malcolm X is a leader is because we, the people, have agreed to let them lead us, right? They have persuaded us. They were both obviously great writers, great speakers. They made a lot of public appearances, yes, in churches and on the street corners, in their writings. Both men were prolific communicators. Again, not keeping it in their heads, but out, speaking, writing, moving around the country, right? Putting themselves in front of as many people as possible who could then hear them and go, damn. Yeah, that's that's what you. I'm with you, brother. You, I'm totally. You got me. You know, Malcolm Martin. You got me. What do you want me to do? You want me to go here, here? What? What's the next step? But that's that is a an amazing and precious commodity. But it also could go the other way. If the leader does something kinky, or stupid, or 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 goes against the people, we revoke that privilege and we say, you know what, I don't believe you anymore, Tom. You betrayed us. You you said one thing and you acted, you got caught in a scandal. You were a thief, you whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's a tenuous relationship that must be proven over and over again. It's a tough road to hoe. Whereas if in the army, let's say that as a completely different example, if I'm the general and you're the sergeant, do you ever tell me what to do? No. Does it, I don't have to prove myself to you. I'm the general. However, I got to be the general. Or if I'm the CEO, do I listen to the shipping clerk? Shipping clerk could be a brilliant young lady. She says, Mr. CEO, I want you to, I think you should change your product. You know, who are you? Who are you? Shipping clerk person? I'm the boss. I'm the CEO. You know what I'm saying? These roles have authority by their nature. You know? And they don't require the assent of the governed. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't care how many sergeants get together in a room, they will never overrule the general. Right? Just it's just it's not how it works. A everyone in the company, all all the shipping clerks, all the drivers of FedEx could get together, unless they have a really great union, they're not going to tell the CEO of FedEx what to do. If the, if the leader of FedEx is wise, he might listen to his drivers, you know, and be instructed, but he don't have to. And the same thing with the general. General, do not have to listen. The general is the general. But that's not the kind of, that's not the kind of leadership we're speaking about here. Okay. He said the, the, the leader has a vision. And that's something that we could spend a whole class discussing. How do you make a vision? Where does it come from? How do you articulate one? Um, that's a, a ten, that's a potential class that we can do just just by that. Um, when we uh, in the past, this class is focused on uh, nonprofit management, um, and when we do that version of the class, I ask every intern to create a nonprofit, and the exercise that gets close to this is creating a mission statement. So we don't have time to go into that now, but I invite you to find out what 
the mission statement is for IC Stars. Do you know it? Does anybody know what the mission for IC Stars is? What is it? Roger is nodding his head. What is it, Roger? Um, I'm gonna go on a whim. I don't. I don't think I, I um, know the exact one, but this is just from my my experience. Um, it's to take um, non traditional people from um, our urban communities. Um, I hate to use the word impoverished, but um, that's one of them. Just to take those individuals and immerse them in uh, business leadership and tech and, and put them in roles to where they can thrive and, third and, and flourish in the communities that they come from. I, I think that's a fair, you know, approximation, but it's not the actual words of the mission statement. So go online, don't do it now, but um, I would encourage you to go online and see if you can find the mission statement from IC Stars and see if that gives you, you know, it, it's kind of, I'm gonna say it's gonna be approximate what Roger said, but see the words they, they chose and test it out. Does it, does it make your does it make your pulse quicken? So, in other words, Sandy and her colleagues had a vision 25, 26 years ago, right? And it wasn't just in her head, this vision, obviously. She was pissed off at something. We can we can talk about that, you know, in another context. What was she pissed off at? And then she decided, here's the thing I'm going to do to make that thing go away and get us to a better place. I'm going to call it Icy Stars. And here's the stuff we're going to do together. And as we discussed last class, the product is before us. You know, your cycle two, the cycle 55 coming, you know, et cetera, et cetera. That's the, that's the evidence, <laughs> you know, if you want to talk about the evidence. Uh, how, many, how many interns are working presently in tech? Exact, you know, how many interns have homes? That's the evidence. Yeah, you want to say something else? Uh, yeah, uh, I know you said don't search it, but uh, I went ahead on my own and uh, actually researched the uh, the mission okay. statement. Go ahead. All right. What is so it? this is what it says. It says our mission is to activate a technology community of change agents to power social and economic freedom. Really brief. I mean, that's that's like I like twelve. Short words. and simple. Short but and it, simple. It's, kind, the it's kind of what he, you said before. I mean, isn't it? Kind of right. Would you say? So, um, so that I guess for 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 lack of a better words, that's the vision that's on the table, right? And I would say that if Sandy didn't write it herself, I'm I'm going to guess she and her team, you know, probably noodled it together. It's not exactly what it was. A few years ago, so it changes, right? You know, it gets refined, it gets sharpened over time, I would say. And so that's the vision in which we, we are all sharing. And all the people who give IC Stars money, right? They're board of directors. So if you look on the website, you will see who are, who's the board. So these are people who are not being paid, but they are lending their expertise, right? And their time and their love to this organization. So they all have signed on to that vision. And if something goes wrong, if Sandy somehow steals all the money and runs off to Jamaica or whatever, you know, if the whole thing collapses, then we it, the, the case dissolves. It's like a house of cards. And the rest of the world will be will, will be looking for that evidence of success and they won't see it and IC stars will go away. You know, but it's not going to go away because the evidence is strong. It's getting bigger and bigger and better, so it's going in a great direction. But you can, but you can, you can see how this would work if all of a sudden, for some reason, the leadership of IC Stars went south and made some terrible errors. It could lead to disaster. All right. So I will share with you um, this little slide here. Um, and you see like the pillars of a building. You see that image? Yes, okay, cool. So the seven pillars of servant leadership are as follows. You are a person of character. You are a person who puts people first. You are someone who is a skilled communicator. You're someone who has foresight and has a, is a good strategic thinker. You're someone who's a collaborative and compassionate collaborator. 
and passionate collaborator. You're a systems thinker, and you're someone who leads with moral authority. Those are the seven characteristics of the servant leadership, of the servant leader. And I think you can see, you know, um, the through the through line and the thread of, of the people that you suggested and what what the archbishop was talking about when we talk about, you know, what is a person of character? How do we know that someone puts people first? Um, how do we know that um, someone is leading with moral authority? And I think I think we've, we've we've sort of addressed those in a very top line manner. Okay, that's sadly all the time we have for servant leadership. Um, now let's get into the second domain, um, which is civic brain. All right. In this situation now, we're asking you to think about um, stuff you should know, okay? What should we know? What skills should you have? And what's the context you should have in order to be a great civic actor? We're going to ask you to use the Jamboard. And uh, so I'll put this in your, in your chat. We're going to go back to the same four groups that we just had, two people each. Please click over to the Jamboard and put on this Jamboard um, what should be in the civic brain, okay? What should be in the civic brain? And again, the prompts are stuff you should know, skills you should have, what kind of context might you need in order to be a great civic actor? You'll have, you'll have 10 minutes for this exercise. So here we go. Let's open up the rooms now. Okay. You'll see super duper. We are out of the small groups. Uh, the assignment was to, to, to think about this new uh, bucket of civics, which we call the civic brain. We ask you to use the jam boards, uh, four small groups, all recorded your thoughts. Thank you for using those jam boards really, really nicely. I love it. You can return to those jam boards even later if you want and add images, uh, dress them up, uh, make, them, make them sparkle. So we got four groups. Uh, Four rooms. Let's start with room one. Um, everyone can see the jam board? Yes? Okay. All right, group one. What should be in the civic brain? What should be in the civic brain? Um, sorry, my mic was off. Uh, so um, we decided to for stuff you should know, I think uh, first and foremost is the consequences for any reckless action. You know, you're weighing constantly what's at risk and how you, how your action will affect whatever your agenda is. Does that um, mean, does, hold on, does that mean knowledge of the law? Yeah, knowledge of the law and also knowledge of just um, of social, like, like just uh, being socially aware. Right. Okay. That's kind of where it goes to as far as context. You want to have local historical awareness and also global political awareness. Cause depending on how big your issue is, you're trying to challenge. Um, how could how you present yourself now affect you in the future? Right. So you want to have a clear sense of self awareness. You self want to know who you are and you want to know exactly what you're trying to express. You want to immediately you want to, you also want to know the immediate community needs around you you know what's mm -hmm. what's the what's the need of the people in the communities you're trying to affect you don't just want to show up and be like hey i'm here to help build this <laughs> monument to myself and that's let me let me stop you there because yeah. that's a that's a huge one so in order to to be smart about what the community is we need some facts yep we would know for example what is the income of your fan, of your community how many people live in the community? Are they black, white, Latino? What, what, you know, these are facts that you can get from the census, you know, or from the, from the mayor's office. Um, you know, does your community have a name? Like I live in Lincoln Park. So I, when I asked you to stay, tell me where you stay, people said like I stay in Raysville or South, South Kansas City. So when you responded, that's usually a community area, right? That's meaningful to you. That would, that would, that if you said I live in, 
Raysville or or Blacktown or or whatever the whatever the nickname of your of your community is, people go, oh, yeah, I know what I know what you're talking about. South 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 Philly or whatever it is, Six Mile, you know, in Detroit, whatever that phrase is, you, people will go, yeah, I know exactly on the map where it is that you're speaking of. Okay, so um, what's the graduation rate? How many people own homes? Where are the churches? Where are the parks? Would that be part of what you're talking about? Yeah, that's that's more or less what I had in mind. Um, yeah, yeah. that's okay. with the uh, local political awareness is is um it's just knowing knowing the the heart of the people in a given area. Okay, um, and you, so, you got to know who your reps are. Yeah, and okay. global global community uh, global community awareness is knowing the knowing how the whole ecosystem would react towards certain circumstances or certain proposed ideas whether they'd be quick to accept it or is or resilient and whether or not they would condemn or praise um your actions if you were to if you were to go a certain way about it so it's 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 it seems like you've got to have a wide vision very wide vision wide vision and that requires taking in facts and, and having your finger on the pulse of whatever. So finger on the pulse of the community, a wide vision on my city. Okay. Yeah. We can see how this is work here. You know, I I got to get some studying done. I'm not running off half cocked here. As like you said, making a mind of myself, just speaking, speaking to no purpose. A lot of homework is what is what is required. Okay. Group two. Let's see what we got here. Group two. So, um, we put, one of the things we put is they need to know how the current policies affect or relate to uh, their issue. Okay. Which means uh, you got to know what the current policies are. Right. So, um, you know, what's the three strikes in your outlaw? I mean, you got... If you, if, you get a, if you run a foul of the law, there's a thing called three strikes and you're out. I mean, that's a federal law, right? Which, which is a, a little related to what Group One says. You kind of got to know your rights. Yeah. So when you know the law, it means if you're pulled over, you know what what happens when a policeman pulls you over. What happens if a police stops you in the street? What are your rights? What happens if you get evicted from your house? Can you be evicted from your house with notice, without notice? Can a landlord just come and throw your ass out? On the street in Chicago, it can't be done if it's below uh, forty degrees. That's the law in Chicago. Okay, keep going. Uh, they have to have some organizational or co and collaborative skills mm -hmm. Great. in order to get some motion or momentum. Yep, and similar to Group One's context, yeah. Uh, one of the things we said is they have to um, have they have to know or have the same the perspective of the people who they're representing. Okay, got it. I see it here. Knowing what's going on in your community, and that can be simply done by listening. So I was saying before, you're getting your census data. You you know what the trends are. You know if there's homelessness in your community. You know what the crime rates are. You know these are facts that you can get. But there's also other kind of listening, like you just go and you talk to people. You're interviewing. You interview the pastors. You interview the heads of the PTA. You go talk to the local city councilman. Or you just hang out on the street and just chat with the neighbors. Intentionally listening. That will build up your picture of the community. So you got sort of the facts, the demographics, you know what I'm saying? Census stuff. But then you also have this sort of qualitative, this more personal, like I talked to 50 women at the nail shops. I went to all the barber shops and I sat and I schmoozed in the barber shops on six Saturdays. I learned so much, right? It wasn't about data as it was. I was just listening to the guys in the barber shops. Okay. Anything else that you got about a good stuff? Anything else? Oh, you're muted. 
We got being able to recognize the most was the issues that are most important within that community. Got it. And, okay. You know. Awesome. Again, there's a little overlap, uh, but we, we're seeing we're seeing I think some sets of skills here that uh, are starting to show up. Okay, group three. What do you got? So um, for the first bullet point, what they should know, um, what I said was that, one, they need to know the problem at hand. They need to know what the problem or the issue is. And they need to understand that and how it's impacting the community in order to be able to find a solution because you can't find a solution to a problem if you don't know what the problem is. Okay. Um, the skills you should have you, you need to be able to to advocate for yourself and other people in that community. If you're if you're fight, if you're trying to um, give back or you're trying to fight to, to solve an issue in that community, you need to be able to advocate for the people in that community. Um, and you need mm -hmm. to be able to speak publicly is also something I put in there. You know, advocate publicly, speak publicly. Um, now, for the, the third bullet point, I, I kind of um, didn't fully understand what it was asking i thought I, I texted it but what i how i answered it was you need to understand why you're fighting for what you're fighting for your purpose behind it mm. well i'm going to lift up one one point you made here strategic thinking <clears throat> we can have a whole conversation about how to do strategy that, that is a science my friends <clears throat> it's an art but it's also a science so how does one be a strategic thinker one professor told me that being a strategic thinker is able to is, is being able to see into the future. Ooh. Oh, I have put that. For me, strategic I thinking was more of like it's kind of like how some moments happen at that right time and place in a way. And that's what really sparks that like momentum that gets you like the backing that you need. It's all about that time, place, and how you really carry yourself in that moment to take advantage of that chance to be able to cause change. Well, it's it's a little more than that. Again, but, yeah. Because you, to be a strategic thinker requires knowledge of trends, powerful trends. So you're, you're, you're a data nerd. I mean, a, a strategic thinker is is following the facts into the future. A strategic, a strategic thinker is also being a little creative in their brains. They're thinking about a situation that doesn't exist. They're thinking about the present, what it is now, but they're also thinking about powerful and predictive trends and are able to, to imagine what the present will look like in five years if dot, dot, dot happen. And then you're a strategic thinker is also to be able to place one thing after another in a logical sequence that leads somewhere. So it's a strategic thinker. It doesn't shoot from the hip and just speaks whatever willy nilly, you know, kind of like, hey, I feel like doing this. No, a strategic thinker has thought some shit out based on some, some stuff. But that's a whole nother conversation. But I will agree with you 100%. A strategic strat strategy is speaking. And another thing that you guys mentioned was speaking publicly. What's the number one fear that people have, even greater than dying? Public speaking. <laughs> yes. So that is very true. And and IC Stars will give you, has given you, will give you many chances to speak in public, like in the, in the cycle, you know. So the public is a small public. But it's still more than you. You'll be given other chances to speak, you know, in front of clients, you know, larger groups, people who are not in the cycle. And over time, you'll be speaking in other forums where you're not you're not going to know anybody in the room. And the better you are at being a public speaker, the more likely you're going to succeed in business and in civics. Yes, absolutely true. And those of us that are just good at talking, like I'm used to be an actor, so I I'm not. I don't have any trouble with speaking in public, but notice if your fellow teammates are shy or soft-spoken or, or, or hesitate to speak. There's some people that always want to go first. So you want to be like a, a good jazz player. You want to be able to know when to step up and step back and to give your encouragement to your teammates, your, your cycle mates who are the soft ones, who are the ones who are the more shy and who just, for whatever reason, are going to be a little more quiet and, you know, they're a little more reserved. Give them encouragement. Make them step up and be bold, right? Use your outside voice. So some of us are, are bold and we just don't have any trouble. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know? Being bold speakers and being funny and being, you know, being kind of um, sure of, about ourselves. We're not, we're not 
we're comfortable in that situation. Some of us are just not. So the, the, the question is, can we help us all become great, powerful communicators? And, and the answer is yes, we can. We can help each other. We can we can coach each other. We can give each other some some good feedback. Powerful. That's a great point. It's a small little thing here on the on the on the board. Good speaker, the ability to speak publicly, but it's a huge, huge, huge one. Okay, uh, I like it a lot. Okay, group four, and we'll be almost done. Group four. Oh, I like the picture. Group four. What do you got? Group four. All right. Uh, all right. So um, we didn't put the uh, the points on there, but all of these go along with it. So, OK, so what um, what a, a civic brain should stuff you should know, skills you should know or skills you should have in context you can have. So you should have. So we put um, the the level of understanding, awareness among citizens about their rights and responsibilities so mm -hmm. those are things you should know you, uh, stuff you should should know mm -hmm. and um skills you should have the uh, ability uh the ability of individuals and groups within the community to identify issues analyze them critically and develop uh solutions collab collabor co collectively collabor mm -hmm. collaboratively mm-hmm and um context um the the network of relationships trust and reciprocate re reciprocity mm -hmm. within the community which enables um collective action and uh, resilience in the face mm -hmm. of challenges oh awesomeness i'll pick on the last one this idea of sort of it's almost like there's a treasure map think of it this way as part of understanding your community you're almost doing what's called an asset map of your community. And by that, I mean, mm. what is the phys what's physically in your community? Like where are the schools, where are the churches, where are the parks, right? That's stuff. But then there's like the people, like what yes. are there French speaking people? Are there, are, do people know um, crafts? Are there, are there, are, you know, what, what do I, what do I know about the people? Is this a, is this a community that came from a certain area in the South where baking is, popular or something it just so happens that in my community a lot of people know how to make these pies you know that's a skill or there's a lot of people in this community that can do magic tricks for whatever reason so these are things that you kind of have to go out and know we have we have a lot of women in the community who happen to work at the local railroad station because there's a railroad nearby and so it just so happens that in our community there's a lot of people who have know about railroads <laughs> you know what i'm saying so that's the treasure hunt you go on. Also, we have many associations. We have drumming groups. We have bridge clubs. We have choirs. We have um, Alcoholics Anonymous. We have a YMCA where they're doing uh, basketball teams. We have many sports teams out of the local parks, which means there are coaches. So that's it's a kind of what I call a treasure hunt. And when you think about your community in that way, it, this list starts to grow. It's a big, long list. Even if you think your community is full of troubles and problems and ills, which some communities do, but many communities and the leaders in them don't take the time to make this list of treasure. And it's a, it's, it's a, it's a huge list of stuff that's, that's in your community. And it's called your assets, your community assets. And absolutely any leader worth their salt is going to know all that stuff because they would have taken the time to do the treasure hunt. <laughs> either by themselves or with their colleagues. They're going to know, hey, Tom, you're a leader in Community X. Where are the churches? Who are the pastors? I'll be able to tell you, you know, or, or similar similar information. So, okay. When we return for session three, we'll start again. We'll, we'll ask you to think about what's the one, two, or three top things that you should be in the civic brain. So you can be thinking about that ahead of time. Um, and so uh, we now will um, go into our, our final, uh, our, our third bucket, <clears throat> um, which is civic muscle. Okay, so in our third session, one week from today, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna go back to the civic uh, list 
we'll ask about what kinds of things you should be doing. And after we have that conversation, I'll share with you the list of stuff that you actually did, and we'll see if they line up.